So the reason that I came tonight, other than to thank you all for uh, being so nice to me over the past 10 years and being so supportive of this growing neighborhood, is to talk about one of the very last things in my basket that I'd like to see completed, and that is the uh, Gold, Mark, Gold Medal Park Permanence Plan. So many of you know, um, how many people remember what Gold Medal Park looked like eight years ago? So most remember it was a sea of surface parking lots bisected by a power line uh, that weren't even filled. And uh, when Dr. McGuire uh, said that that's not acceptable in this neighborhood and I want to step forward and do something, uh, the city really uh, moved hand in hand with him on this private public partnership, hoping that it would turn out to be a gigantic success. But knowing that, um, how we would work it out going forward was something we'd figure out a long time from now. Well, here we are a long time from now. There's two years left on the lease, and I'm just thinking my term ends in two months. So I really want to figure out a way to kind of nail this down so that there's no concerns going forward. So what uh, I have suggested, what Council Member Hofstad is supporting, and what I think I have a majority of votes on the City Council for, is to take the existing contract that we have and cross out the word 10 years and put in the word 50. So we don't need to renegotiate a contract. We don't have to have all sorts of new and different terms. There aren't a lot of things that aren't working, and there's a lot that is working. So I kind of have the opinion, let's keep it stupid, simple. We don't need to have a whole bunch of lawyers involved. We're going to change the word 10 years to 50 years. The other thing that the city is going to do at Dr. McGuire's request, but also to help shore up the uh, ongoing maintenance, is we are going to eliminate the clause that says the city gets $50,000 annually as a lease payment. This was one of the conditions of the original agreement. We weren't sure what was going to happen with tax-based revitalization. This was a downturn. It was a high point in the economy followed by an incredible downturn, and we were worried that there wouldn't be a lot of development associated with the park. Now that's not really a worry, and I don't think we need to be in the business of charging a private nonprofit foundation rent in order to do something good. The agreement on the other end will be that the park foundation run by Dr. McGuire and his family will maintain the park to the level we've been accustomed to for the term of the lease. So it's really a win-win for everyone involved. Um, there is some council action that needs to be taken because anytime you're making a land use, a permanent land use change in the city's comprehensive plan, we need to have a hearing in front of the planning commission. That is scheduled to happen in November with the council voting on it by the end of the year. So we'll end the 10-year lease, uh, the payment will go away, and we'll start a 50-year lease, hopefully starting in June. It sounds like the lease is one that started around 2006, around June 5th of 2006. So I'd invite uh, Bill to come up and kind of talk about his vision and commitment. This would not have been possible without uh, Bill and his family saying this is something they wanted to do for the next 50 years. 50 years is a long time, but it's, it's short enough that the people who are involved in their families will be able to remember the commitment that was made. The city does uh, do these kinds of leases very occasionally. I want to note this is modeled after what people call the Cancer Survivors Park. The city actually owns that property on a 100-year lease. So it's not out of the question that the city would allow the use of land that it owns for parks, not a part of the official park system. And there might be an opportunity for the official park system to work into this deal over time because the Guthrie portion is not the city portion. Um, we can't make the Guthrie do anything. Uh, hopefully Dr. McGuire will be able to coax them into doing something with their land. Uh, but the city's going to move forward on our piece because we've waited long enough and quite frankly an election was a good excuse as any to try to figure out how to tie this up. So I want to introduce Bill who's spoken here before and do um, you want to use the phone? Probably not. <laughs> Should I? Um, thank you Lisa. Um, and uh, all of us appreciate the effort. Certainly there have been a lot of people involved in this on an ongoing basis, but she articulates this very well when we sat around many years ago and talked about the idea of doing something with that land and creating green space that would last. Our horizon was 10 years thinking that at 10 years with a well done park facility, a green space with mature trees and all the things that pushed it ahead very quickly, none of us or anybody else that came in sight 
would ever envision doing anything with it other than keeping it apart. Um, that was the plan. I would say that I think everyone has appreciated the park and wants to keep it apart, but getting there is not quite as easy as saying, oh, wow, let's just do this, because there are a variety of interests, as there always are in life. And uh, the fact that 60% or so of the park, which is that owned by the city and leased to the Park Development Foundation, which was created as an aside to both manage the park and serve as a future vehicle for similar development and management for a long time should we go there and have the opportunity to go there. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, it gave us the chance now to look at this and the 60% is the first step and half of that, so to speak. Um, what happens now, I think, is going to go well into the future with a few more bricks to fall. Um, this is great. It's also great not to pay $50,000 a year uh, on top of the maintenance and the way this has been handled. So we look at this as a, as a great opportunity. We have separately been talking um, with folks at the Guthrie and uh, with the help and uh, leadership of a number of people, but particularly Wendy Nelson, who's the outgoing chair of the board, um, I think are close to putting something together that will bring the majority of the Guthrie's piece into a situation under the sort of ownership or purview of the Park Development Foundation, which will bring the two pieces together under one sort of ongoing management um, maintenance vehicle. That's a separate discussion, not there yet, but I feel pretty good about it. It involves um, finding a significant amount of money. Um, as Lisa, I think, mentioned the last time we were together, a couple times ago, you know, all parties have different issues. For the Guthrie, this is a piece of land. It has some asset value maybe future development, and we're working around the notion of perhaps there could be a small piece carved out that should ever there be a need for an expansion. That's the part that would work, and it would still fit out um, destroying the basic nature of the park, the green space, and what it accomplishes. I think we're very close to getting that done. Um, we have pretty much secured some initial economic or financial support to help with that, to help the gut rate. I think it will all come together hopefully in the next several months, and then we will have a situation where there will be two separate pieces, still owned by separate parties, but working under a lease arrangement, all governed, so to speak, I say governed, but governed, and maintained by the Park Development Foundation, which is in separate 501c3, as I said, set up just for this purpose. We will expand the people involved with that entity a little bit at the board level to include a couple other folks. Paul Riles will be one of those who's been working on this with me. Um, and we will use it as a vehicle to hopefully bring in funding support to continue the kind of maintenance that we can and who knows down the road maybe be able to expend, expend the same kind of energy and resources elsewhere in the city should the opportunities come about to do this kind of thing. So really a continuation of this public-private partnership that's been in effect. So I feel pretty good for the first time on the pieces together. This is a great first step. Um, you know, there's a lot of parties in the end that will all as well. Um, you know, that in the end, this is all about a shared vision. Lisa, the city council, a lot of folks in the community, John and the park board, all about preserving and in fact building green spaces that will reside side by side with 
facilities and buildings and residences and other things um, to really set up as a hallmark for the community uh, on a long-standing basis. So that's where we are, and I think we're in pretty decent shape. I, I just want to publicly thank the two of you. I know from the very beginning what you've gone through, what you've done, and how you've envisioned this. And we, the beneficiaries in this neighborhood, will be eternally grateful, especially for 